Good evening, everybody. Um, I think I'm just going to jump straight into the game because we're in the middle of uh, Friends in Low Places, which is a little challenging. Um, although we had a fairly good start to it, uh, I've been making increasingly reckless decisions, which um, All right, this is causing some frustration. Okay. Um, so, yeah, um, what I've noticed, uh, especially from last game, I, I think I'm running into the tendency to... Uh, um, I don't know, make a few more reckless mistakes than I really should. Um, I I think I'm, I've kind of got to this point where I sort of know that I'm going to reset. So one of the things I wanted to avoid on this playthrough was um, just by default resetting things when, um, you know, when it didn't go my way. Um, but I also didn't want to start over each time I lost. I mean, it's not an Iron Man playthrough. Uh, but what I think I've done is I'm starting to just sort of treat it like I'm going to reset every time I like miss a shot or something like that without explicitly saying so. So I'm going to try and be a little more cautious in terms of how I do it. I still want to learn the game through just sort of making mistakes and, and trying, trying different things as they go along. Um, but I'm going to do my best to be a little more honest in how I go about some of these um, some of these things. So, um, as usual, we'll set up the Overwatch. Uh, Zhang. I've crossed many lines during my life, but now we all face a common enemy. I think I'm going to hold him back for a bit. Now, my big advantage for my sniper is um, is doing sort of two moves uh, where I can. So, do we have anybody else? No. Okay. So where do I put my sniper? A little exposed over here. Um, I could put them straight up. So I think I'm going to risk... Oh, hang on. This is Zhang, not the sniper. Um, so ideally, I would have put them behind this headstone uh, or possibly behind this cover over here. I can't really get them onto high ground. So I can send them around this side and sort of hope I don't get flanked on the right. Um, or behind this headstone, which is not the best use of the two moves. I could also put them way over to the left, but I think that keeps them out of the out of the action. So um, this isn't my strongest move, but I think it's the best that I've got right now. So and then we'll send Jang up and head down. Heads up, commander. Intermittent contact. It's something different from the others. Oh, that's right. Okay, so the best case for me here is to take advantage of my um, of my assault, who should not be affected by the. Um, by the Overwatch. The first one, anyway. Uh, he may get hit by the Muton, but that does free me up for some other attacks on... With what we've seen so far, it was only natural to assume the aliens okay. would have something specialized towards frontline combat. Oh my god! <laughs> Sorry, I am reloading that. <laughs> um, that was supposed to be a shotgun attack. So, everything is the same. Um, well, almost everything. It's killing time. I've crossed many lines during my life. But now we all face a common enemy. Heads up, Commander. You've got an intermittent contact. It's something different from the others. One of the real dilemmas about the Thin Man spawning on that platform is the poison that uh, comes out when they uh, when they uh, die. So that's normally a pretty good spot to 
to take out some enemies. With what we've seen so far, it was only natural to assume the aliens would have something specialized towards frontline combat. So of course the drawback here is that I'm wiping out my shotgun um my shotgun ammo by doing this, so that would mean that uh, if the Muton winds up in a good spot to attack, uh, I'm not going to be able to do anything with my assault uh, next round. I'm going to have to dedicate them to reloading. But I need to, uh, I do need to deal with the fact that, um, you know, it, it's a strong enemy. I mean, there's somebody in a very dangerous position both for the VIP and for, um, and for my squad, so you know, you don't you don't always get to pick your uh, your engagements. And I think the reality of the situation is going to be that if I just keep my sniper in Overwatch, uh, they are likely not going to be able to um, to do much with uh, with them uh, attacking the muton. Um, the other drawback is is that the thin man has um, has sort of blocked this. Um, this area with their poison. So what I think I'm gonna do, let's see what I can get done with my... Okay, so my heavy can move up to that headstone. My support can move up there. They'll likely trigger the overwatch. Um, alternatively, I don't think the physics work on this, but let's... Yeah, okay. Obviously a very optimistic line of reasoning, but... Okay, so nothing... Nothing helpful um, coming out of that. I could do an overwatch, or I can try and aggressively move up. What does that do for my... Um, well, let's try this. Okay, that also didn't trigger the overwatch, but it didn't put him into a good position to take on the muton. So now I face some tricky decisions because if I go too far up, then potentially this guy... Well, actually, you know what? I should be okay... I should still be okay here because I don't think he can move forward enough to be able to get the flank. If he does, I'm in trouble, but we'll... We'll try it. The other thing I could have done was to try and drop the smoke on my, my assault, but I know my assault has uh, a good badge, so. Um, what this also does, of course, so the reason why I did that was I wanted to clear up this cover for my heavy. So this is all sort of predicated on the idea that the Muton is not going to move forward. It's possible that they will, at which point sort of all bets are off. Um, and I think this is not my strongest move with my sniper, but I want to... So the problem here is that they might be in, um, oh, they're not in range of the muton. So, I mean, again, it's, overall, it's maybe not the, not the best, but, um, it's a slightly better angle, and we'll see if my, uh, we'll see if my assault survives the encounter. Heads up, boys and girls. Intel suggests hostiles are headed right for you. Interesting. So I think my sniper is going to get it in the throat. Oh, nope. Still my assault. Now, and that, uh... That is quite the bummer, actually. Um, I might need to use my... Um, I might need to use my assault to break the overwatch on this. Okay, so let's see what my... Sniper's gonna do. That's a brutal um, chance to hit, but I sort of need to take it. Okay, not bad. I really do need to get this guy um, reloading. Um, so we're gonna do something a little counterintuitive. So that was to trigger the overwatch. Now the dilemma here is that he's way out in the open. I didn't realize that coming off the 
I didn't realize that coming off the bridge would be sufficient. Or off the stairs would be sufficient. So. Actually. The ideal situation for me is to do something to break uh, the cover for the Muton. Um, okay, this is a waste of a rocket, but I need I need kind of an assurance at the moment. So the so idea here is that I can't risk uh, Zhang or my um, or my heavy getting uh, getting hit. Um, Oh, I, that's right, he doesn't have a grenade, so that's, um, that's going to cause me some trouble. Um, Good to go. I don't think it improves my chances at all, but it does, um... Just the dynamic of the, the fight a little bit. He may try to move to flank, though. And he did exactly that. Oh, but it's not a flank. <laughs> Just as bad, though. Okay. But, I think I can turn this into a flank for myself, so I should be able to move up here. This is going to give me a... You're kidding me. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well. Gonna get him out of cover. Now my sniper has a better shot. Okay, so. You got a few choices with my... Actually, you know what, the first thing I'm gonna do Oh, my support is down for the count. So what I really want to do here is get as close as I can to the exit um, to end the, end the mission. And I move Zhang up pretty aggressively as well. Um, I think there's going to be some other guys that drop, but basically I want this thing to end in three turns so I don't lose my... Yep. Okay. I should be able to deal with this. Hmm. Okay, that's going to be a little more complicated, but... Um... Oh, sorry, I hit my Windows key. So the approach I'm going to take here um, is I'm going to use my... So I'm going to risk my assault. Uh, again, he's got quite a few hit points, so I'm going to do a run and gun. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up so that I, I take out the Thin Man. Now the drawback here is that I don't have anybody with a grenade to take care of the... Um, uh, to take care of the Sectoid. Um, So this should be an automatic kill on the Thin Man, which is my... It's kind of... I consider them to be the deadlier of the two um, enemies. So now I need to somehow manipulate my team uh, to be able to deal with these other, other threats. So for now I'm going to move the Sniper up. I'm going to keep them so that they're going into cover. Um, so any damage I can do helps. I've got one more character to try and try and cause some some trouble. Um, ah, but I can get Jang to the exit. So I've given up everything to keep this device out of the wrong hands. So this allows me to. Our target has reached the extraction point. Secure the surrounding area and eliminate any remaining hostiles. 
Okay, so I'm gonna try moving up here so that I can... Not a great chance to hit, but let's go for it. Bad luck. Okay, so my heavy and my assault are in a bad spot. Overwatch, interesting. So, the answer here is to get as close as possible. Lightning reflexes, again, this thing is paying off handsomely. And we should be able to end the engagement. and our contact are secure. Get back to HQ for debriefing. Okay, so uh, this is a pretty fun little uh, series of missions. The problem is the, the next one uh, in it, um, there's a train mission. Uh, very, very difficult. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm okay with the fact that I didn't lose any operatives. I'm not okay with the fact that I, I, I dropped two guys. Um, but, you know, them's the breaks. Um, I am trying to live with the consequences of my decisions. But I, Within reason, obviously. If I think it's going to screw the playthrough, then I... <laughs> I head back out. Okay. Uh, so, hollow. Oh, so I didn't give hollow targeting. Well, that's going to fix things. Um, I like squad sight. And, okay, so I can do rapid fire, two shots in succession um, with a or fire a shot that causes enemy to run out of cover. The shot is easy to hit with, but does reduce damage. That is a really tempting one to go for. Um, I think for this one I'm going to go for as much damage as I can. Um, but this is a, a this is a very tempting one. I haven't really used it in the game yet. Um, and I really should start assigning some of these medals. Okay. I never really look at the artifacts we've got. So Sectoid Corpse, Thin Man Corpse, that was the first Muton that we encountered, and 20 weapons fragments. Uh, Dr. Valen has confirmed that the alien device is genuine. All the alien's presence at the extraction was uh, perhaps evidence enough Dr. Jenna's theories. Ah, okay. And Zhang is, um, Zhang joins the, uh, joins the, the, uh, 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 the project, XCOM, um, as a result of this mission, so. Um... I've got money to work with. This morning, We're always glad to have more help down here. Um, I still need to wait on the power generator. How long will that take to build out of curiosity? Um, doesn't say. I have at least one day to wait. Um, let's take a look at my medals. So urban combat will give five defense, one in cover. Um, the international service cross... Uh, plus two will per different different nationality, um, or plus two aim per continent bonus XCOM is earned. So this is not going to be fantastic for me right away, um, but this is a pretty good bonus uh, based on what I plan to do in the future. Finally, there's the Council Medal of Honor. Uh, so plus one aim and will for each mission completed with no soldier deaths, up to a maximum of plus ten. I'm curious if that starts counting from when I um, when I started, um, or plus 10 AM in critical chance, if not within seven tiles of an allied unit. So I tend to keep my squad reasonably close together, um, and um, I don't know, I don't think I've ever gotten this medal before, actually, so. 
So of course the trick now is I need to figure out who to assign these things to. So let's see, urban combat badge. Um, I believe I only have the one assault. Oh no, I've got, okay. So Boomer's got one and Klaus will get the other. Um, I do tend to use my support somewhat aggressively. Um, I think I'm going to keep one in reserve. Uh, now this is for aim, uh, so what I'm probably going to do here is assign this to the snipers. Now the drawback of course is my snipers aren't particularly well developed yet. Um, but in this case I'm going to start with giving this to uh, Adriana. I'm going to skip giving it to uh, Hui, um, and that's just because I, I'm not, not going to take them on a mission yet, so I might find other uses. And then plus aim and will for each mission completed with no soldier deaths up to a maximum of plus 10. Um, there's a few different arguments for this. So I could give this to an assault, although the way I use my assaults, I tend to get, get in close and, and smack people with a, a shotgun. Um, Possibly a sniper, but I'm already giving them an aim bonus. So sort of by process of elimination, that would suggest a support or a, um, a heavy. So I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to skip. So basically, I've got one of each to assign. Um, and I'm going to think a little bit more on, um, on what I want to do. By the way, guys, I'm not 100% sure whether or not... Um, my chat is active, so if I've been ignoring you, it's it's not um, <laughs> it's not on purpose. Uh, it's just because I haven't seen any activity in chat. So if you can just give me a quick second here, I'm going to take a look at um, my mobile app to make sure that I'm not uh, I'm not messing things up. Cool. I have not been able to see chat at all. <laughs> all right, let's get that fixed. Uh, and it says that I'm hosting Kalusha. Hey, okay. Thank you very much for the host, The Eyes of Sin. Hello, Mingo Duck. Hello, The Eyes of Sin 92. Um, I've got the, <laughs> the clip here. Uh, I have been ignoring all of you for what looks like about half an hour, and it says I have all of two viewers. So I deeply apologize. Um, obviously, I cannot... Um, I cannot make uh, anybody who I lost come back, um, but I was not able to see my chat for a long time. So, hello Mingo Duck, hello Eyes of Sin. Um, still recovering, but not bad. Um, I actually, uh, I've noticed my follow account has been declining. <laughs> um, let's just do a quick, uh, let's just take a look and see how, how far it's fallen in the last little while. Um, so my last cast would have been on the first, so I lost two people on the last cast. Um, and then I lost three other people 
okay. It's fewer than I thought, actually. Um, yeah. Bleeding followers. Oh, well. Uh, so this has turned into your new promotional video, as quite a few folks have been playing Observer, uh, and a uh, fellow you mod for was rather curious about what you so found, found so funny about the minigame. Um, that's really that's really funny. Thank you for um, for promoting me, Eyes of Sin. Um, and for those of you who don't know, uh, Eyes of Sin is a caster in addition to being a mod and a um, just a, a general stand-up woman uh, around around Twitch. Um, she's definitely been very encouraging of my cast, which is of course the only thing that matters to me. Um, she had a chance to meet Jesse Quill, who I don't know if she's going to stop by the cast tonight or not. Um, she definitely uh, seemed to get along very well with uh, with Jess, which of course is good for me because I, I like it when all of my friends get along. Um, and she is a very talented artist in addition to being somebody who has a really interesting set of games that she plays. Oh, god damn it. So I'm just having a little trouble putting my chat window up. Um, so yeah, this is such a such a uh, kind of a half-assed um, shout out for her, but she's been somebody who uh, I've been very happy um, to have run into. Uh, she's sort of a breath of fresh air in the cast. She's been a lot of fun to talk with. Um, I got a chance to show her some some, some stuff around Ottawa um, when I was sort of out doing my walk. And um, yeah, she's just been somebody who's given me a lot of um, a lot of encouragement, uh, which is something that I've been me needing for the last couple of weeks. But I'm trying not to be too uh, too depressing to listen to on on cast. So uh, I definitely recommend that you guys check out her stuff. Um, she plays uh, a variety of games, um, and uh, actually, I don't know if her new console acquisition is going to be featured on the cast. Appreciate but oops. Your efforts to support the research team, Commander. I've already put the new recruits to work in the lab. Um, but she's, uh, she really does, uh, she has a really unique cast. She's got a really polished casting style. The funny thing for me was I didn't realize at the time um, that she was so, you know, so polished in terms of her presentation and so well developed in terms of her cast. I sort of assumed that she was somebody who was more of a mod and then eventually got into casting, which might have been true. Um, but she really has a, a well put together cast, which I have a lot of fun watching. Uh, and so I definitely encourage you guys to to check out her stuff. She's got a really unique perspective. Um, she was doing, I didn't get a chance to watch this, unfortunately, but uh, she was doing some sort of synesthesia um, drawing, which is uh, an interesting, like, it's not something that I experience. I only get to uh, experience it vicariously through how she describes things, uh, especially the way she describes my voice, which will get me all tingly in my loins. Um, so uh, she really has a, a very special cast, and I, I do encourage uh, you guys to check her out and check out her cast too. Um, all right, uh, I did save my uh, yes. Okay, so ideally, I'm gonna get everything online. Five days? Excellent. There's probably going to be another council report before... Yep. Commander, we're receiving several urgent requests for assistance. There are abductions in progress at each marked site on the Hologlobe. All right, now this is going to be pretty tricky. Um... I'm backing out for a second just because I want to see what the consequences are. Um, so Europe's pretty in pretty bad shape, um, but Australia and Japan I think are going to have some trouble too. I really feel like I need to I need to take care of Europe though. So oh, uh, I don't need to take. Okay, so it's North America and um, it's North America and Africa. I already know I'm going to take care of Africa, so that's less of a concern. Um, so both are equally troublesome. Um, I 
I'm going to say it's a coin toss. I think numerically, when I take a look at it, right, so it's Canada and Mexico or Japan and Australia that are going to go into the red zone. Um, so it's basically either money or engineers. I really need the engineers, so... Um, Let's go for it. Oh, I forgot to um, level him up. Okay, so I, I really like hollow targeting. Um, shredder or suppression. Suppression seems pretty good, actually. Uh, and I can do 50% damage against robotic enemies, or I can get a second reaction shot if Overwatch, if on Overwatch and the first reaction shot is a hit. I do like being a little more aggressive with this, so I'm, I'm going to... Uh, Go for the heat ammo. And of course, with all of that, I'm going to clear out the squad. I don't remember what it said in terms of its difficulty, but I am going to try and take my, my more junior members. Um, so for instance, Boomer's a really good character, but I want to make sure that I have a replacement on uh, on uh, hand if it, things get things get bad. So uh, Klaus is on the team. Um, I've got a... Heavy. I didn't realize I had three snipers. Bringing along another sniper. And... I think my only living support. <laughs> so the medkits wound up being a little bit of a weak choice for me in a lot of cases, uh, just because I don't use it that much. But uh, I don't want to be... Like, I don't want to be in this case where I need to, like, revive somebody or something like that, so... If you're handing out shoutouts, can you get one? Here's a script. Mingo is an idiot who showed up one day. He has strep throat and a fear of jump-scaring pigeons. Consider yourself shouted out, sir. How's everybody doing tonight? All right, alien abduction in progress, meld energy signature readings are positive, site is clear of civilians, collateral damage is not a concern. Neutralize all hostile targets, locate and secure meld canisters. Uh, when facing an enemy at long range and armed with a shotgun, consider switching to a pistol for uh, reduced damage but increased aim. There is technically a way that you can estimate this. So I always like taking an expected value. So for instance, if you have a shotgun blast, which let's say does three or four damage, but a 1% chance to hit, and you have a pistol that you know is only going to do one damage, but has, let's say, something like a 20% chance to hit, um, it's still better to go for the pistol because the sort of the probability weighted damage that it's going to do is, uh, is just so much better. All right, so what I'm going to try and do here is get as close as I can to this meld without... Um... Okay, so I... There's almost certainly aliens inside here. Um, I do hate the fact that I'm potentially going to trigger, um, but in this case I'm going to be in some fairly good cover, so... Yep, thought so. Oh, now you're changing the terms of the shout-out, Mango Duck. <laughs> okay, uh, nothing I can really do with my sniper, um, but I am going to get them in uh, this nice position here that gives them vision uh, inside the building. So a lovely setup for next round. Of course, if I have to deal with a flanking maneuver from the right, I'm going to be in deep doo-doo. Now, it's debatable as to whether or not I have any use for my assault to head up here. Um, there's one argument for like trying to get up as close. Actually, you know what? This might work, because if they try and flank me, I've still got some light cover over here. So this puts me in a good position for next round. Uh, and the real question here is, what do I do with my heavy? Um, 
say I, I really don't like a turn where I just put everybody into position and they I, they potentially take damage. I forgot to save, didn't I? All right, this might get really ugly, um, but we'll see. We'll see how good. Um, Okay, <laughs> let's see who dies and I can't. Okay, that's encouraging. I might be able to pop that guy with my um, with my sniper. Okay, good news. Oh, well, God's sake, ain't what it used to be apparently. Um, Okay, this is going to be a big risk for this character because if there's something waiting inside that room, he's got nothing to protect him. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to run in, and this is going to take out both uh, both creatures at the same time. Okay, so I got lucky there. So now what I get to do is I get basically a free turn to get everybody in position for the next, uh, the next phase. So I'm going to move my... Uh, support up. They're going to collect the the goodies. Now as far as my heavy is concerned, I've got a couple of problems here just because I don't have any really good spots to put them in. Um, I If I want to put them inside the building... Um, oh, well, we're obviously going to be heading up here, so uh, I can either take them outside the building or... You know what? I'm just going to put them as close to that entrance. So the drawback with this is if I get caught flat-footed, if I have a if I have a character that winds up um, triggering some aliens, uh, they are going to be in a bad spot uh, for sort of a best reply. Um, as far as my sniper is concerned, uh, there's not a lot of really good spots for them on the off chance that they're able to throw some some shots. Uh, through here, but I, I really think they're going to be a bit of a third wheel. That's bad for my assault. Holy crap. Yeah, we've got a lot of problems. Okay. So we got our work cut out for ourselves. Um... I need to make sure that I don't destroy the meld container, so we'll... <laughs> I don't know, I want to see the... Uh... I wanted to see the sectoid getting jiggy with it. Okay, so uh, the rest of this round is going to be protecting myself from the flying monsters. So uh, it's debatable as to whether or not I want to overwatch with a sniper rifle. I feel like I kind of have to. Um, you know what? No, I'm going to overwatch with the pistol. So right now I'm building this turn on the assumption that the the flying um, the flying octopuses are going to be uh, are going to be attacking me. The next best is to uh, put myself in a defensive position where um, where things coming from this side can attack me because there's a big hole uh, in this area here right now. But unfortunately, there are not a lot of great options for that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare myself for the attack that I know is coming from over here. This shotgunner is going to be able to protect the rest of my squad. And unfortunately, if something comes through those doors up there, I'm just going to be in trouble. So, That's amazing! I've never heard that music before. Can I not get closer to hear that wonderful music again? <laughs> um, 
It's like a restaurant, but also a convenience store. Yeah, it's funny. Like, normally you don't see doors that go in like that. Okay, so the important thing to remember here is that there's going to be another one of those creatures that's coming after us. So we're not in the clear. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to build, I want to move my squad in such a way that everybody will still be protected. Again, it is ideal for me to get that meld, but not at the expense of the safety of my party. So we're going to set everybody up in Overwatch. And we're going to try and prepare for a counterattack in the form of, um, of somebody coming through this hole while uh, one of the invisible beasties is, uh, is also um, on the prowl. So I think what I'm going to do here is uh, the shotgunner again is going to be in a position to uh, protect his comrades. Heavy's finally going to get some better cover. Um, I'm going to move him up here. Okay, we got plenty of time to get that meld, so uh, that's some pressure off. <laughs> Thank god the coffee machine's still intact. I agree, Sin. Uh, now, the nice thing here is that I do get to move my sniper um, somewhere, I think. Um, so beyond the 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 stranglers, um, I think our focus is going to be up here. Now, the drawback is, is that I might trigger some enemies by moving up here, but this is a fairly decent spot for my, my sniper. So, of course, they're not going to be able to overwatch. All right, now that complicates things for me because my expectation was that I would have to deal with um, I would have to deal with the uh, sort of the invisible attack. So, what we're going to do is we're going to progress quite straightforwardly. Again, we've got plenty of time, so I know next round I'm going to be able to take cover behind the the meld. Um, we will. Yeah, all of these are kind of complicated places if I'm expecting a counterattack from uh, this hole. So I'm going to put the shotgunner here. Now the drawback, of course, is that they're not in a very good position to protect my sniper. So the next question is, where do I put my support? Do I put them up here, uh, where they are vulnerable to an attack from this open area? Or do I put them behind here, where, um, you know, it's maybe a weaker... A weaker overall position. Um, I think I'm going to continue to operate on the idea that there's going to be a stealth attack that comes in, so I will go for a slightly more cowardly uh, position. Arguably, I should have just stayed there, but we'll see how it goes. And I have a real dilemma here as to whether or not I want to continue using the pistol, because again, I'm assuming this is going to be where the stealth attack comes. I don't want to waste that ammo, so... Oh, and that was a bad assumption, so everybody's going to be focusing on these guys. I definitely could have used the sniper in that case. Alright, that changes the equation a little bit. Ah, there's the stealth. Okay. So that sucks, uh, because my, sn my sniper's going to be in some trouble here, and they're out in the open. Okay. So they are... This is going to be a very risky move for my heavy. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in overwatch. Um, I'm going to move my... Okay. So now, of course, what we're doing is we're preparing for the Muton attack. Now, in this case, this is not great for my uh, assault because, of course, if I use the if I use the shotgun, then they're in trouble um, when they reload. So, of course, what I'm going to start with here is a shot from the pistol. Hopefully, that does it. Excellent. All right. So, Overwatch for my support. And I need to move my sniper to a better position. Um, and it seems that such a beast doesn't really exist. Um, I can either move them behind the wall here. I'm, I think, less... I'm less likely to be attacked. Actually, maybe should have moved my assault up. I should have moved them somewhere else. Um, 
this is the best of my bad options. Okay, not great for this guy because he's going to get flanked by the Muton. Alright. Phew. My sniper is definitely going through the ringer. Alright. So I get one turn where I try to save my guy. Okay, I'm going to try a, an absolute BS um, round, which is super bold, but everybody's going to die if they don't, if it doesn't work. And then I'm going to try a real one. <laughs> All right, so what's my best chance? Okay, this is my only uh, opportunity, so we'll try and take this guy down. This now opens the possibility for a run and gun. Yeah, so I think you guys can see why I wanted to save for that, because that could have gone very wrong. Um, if it was Iron Man, I might have weighted the probabilities and, and seen whether or not I could got, uh, get away with it. We seem to be doing okay on the mission so far. I don't know. I'm never quite sure about commentary, because I think people kind of like talk me talking about what my um, intentions are. Um, but I also think, last I checked, not a lot of people were watching. So is there anything you guys... Um, I know like my job is to entertain, not to, not to get uh, you guys to poll. But is there anything you particularly want to see um, from this cast? Or is there something that you'd like to sort of have explained? Because um, I'm definitely, uh, obviously, I'm I'm open to uh, I'm open to suggestion, um, especially when it's a smaller cast. It's kind of like when I um, when I first started streaming. One of the advantages that I had was I was able to um, I was kind of able to give more individual attention, and um, I don't know, like it was it was more of a conversation, let's say. Um, so if you guys have something that you'd sort of like to, you know, maybe you're curious about with, um, with XCOM or just something that you'd like to know in terms of why I find the game so compelling, um, I'd definitely be happy to, to try and address any of that. <laughs> Where are you going to get your soft fizzy drinks now, you alien bastards? It's one thing to invade Earth and kill countless people, but you're ruining the sanctity of sugary carbonated beverages. Damn you to hell. More blenders and more bloody spiders. Is this, yeah, I was going to say, apparently I have been... I've been doing this all wrong that I, um, you know, all of these efforts to, um, all of these efforts to try and like, um, <laughs> uh, to try and like play, um, or, or try and like do, um, educational streams or like play strategy games or something like that none of it really matters uh what what i really should have been doing was focusing on the uh the unique um <laughs> I, sh I should have been focusing on that that target demographic of um of uh, uh what do you say um oh god i can hear myself this is horrible um, I should have been focusing on that target uh, demographic of um, of people who just want to hear the blend noises. <laughs> Aurelian, have you played XCOM 2? And if yes, which part of uh, which part do you prefer? Uh, Aurelian, I have played both. Uh, I actually got XCOM 2 at the very start, or at the, the when it first came out. Um, 
thanks to uh, Jesse Quill, who is a mod here, but not present. Um, I think XCOM 2 is uh, XCOM enemy unknown slash enemy within with everything turned up to 11. Um, I think... So... I'm going to give the edge to XCOM 2 because I think generally when games get made, the first version um, will be people figuring out the game. Uh, it's very common when you talk to people who work in game development or you hear um, interviews. They will usually say something to the effect of, you know, there is the game that you make and you have in your head and then you find out how your game really works once you release it. And so I always sort of feel the first game, it's budget constrained. Obviously, there isn't an infinite amount of money to make a game. You want to keep your scope realistic. You are figuring out basic mechanics and systems. Um, and this doesn't mean the first version of every game is bad. Uh, a lot of them are really good, and a lot of them lead to sort of these franchises. Um, but there are limitations. And of course, it's also worth remembering that XCOM was built to be run not just on PCs, but on tablets and on Xbox. So... Um, XCOM 2, it seems to me that was the opportunity where they not only learned from the original XCOM, but they learned from Enemy Within, which was obviously they implemented some mechanics to deal with some of the things that they hadn't accounted for. So, for instance, there was an expectation in terms of how many missions that it would take uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown to sort of complete, and they underestimated. So they had too few maps, and people talked about how repetitive all the maps were. Um, and so obviously one of the big things they did with Enemy Within was added uh, more, um, more levels. So um, my view is, is that XCOM is the game that probably everybody wanted to make at the start of XCOM. Um, and I think it really is focused on, on sort of building that experience that, um, you know, is sort of hiding underneath XCOM, Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within. Um, but with that in mind, they're also two quite different games. Um, and so I, you know, I think my personal preference is for XCOM 2, um, but I do see them as unique enough that um, I, I couldn't imagine having only one in my library. Like, I, I don't really feel the question, if you only had one XCOM, which would you pick would be a fair one, um, because I think there is enough differentiation between the two games that um, that you can enjoy them both for their own reasons. So I realize that's sort of an evasive answer, but uh, deep down I think XCOM 2, just simply because there are more lessons that are learned after watching how people played the original XCOM. And uh, um, I, I don't know, I just think that that work... Um, you know, XCOM 2 basically has everything that was good about XCOM and then the benefit of actually seeing how the public at large played the game. Um, and that's, that's why I said what I did. Um, as I said, I enjoy the descriptions of game mechanics. You like just listening, enjoying learning a bit of, the, of a game. And certain game mechanics, more blog streams, that's what hooked me. Oh, I mean, I, I'm working on a blog right now. I just didn't think I could... Um, I don't think I could really make anything of it. I am going to go for tactical sense here. I know I tend to like going for the aggressive things, but the fact of the matter is the way I use these assaults, I almost always put them at point blank range. So the the bonus on critical chance, I mean, is meaningful, right? Like a crit, a crit can mean the difference between like taking down a muton toe to toe and not. Um, but in this case, I am I am going to go for the the tactical uh, tactical sense because in case you haven't noticed, a lot of my guys spend a lot of time on their back. <laughs> Uh, okay, Brick. Um, I sort of feel like I need to have at least one person that does the Shredder Rocket, but I don't like the fact... The biggest thing here is I like building teams where the specialization just comes from the role, not, you know, I've got my, like, Shredder heavy and my not Shredder heavy. I kind of like the idea that, you know, I don't need to consider about the positioning of some of my other specialized units. So I tend to like going for suppression. I don't even use suppression that much. Um, but I just don't like the fact that this guy might be in the best position for a rocket blast, but he winds up um, he winds up with the weaker um, rocket blast just, by, you know, by chance. So suppression is a little more of a general, um, a general action. And finally, I get squad sight on my... Sniper. 
Okay. Four Sectoid Corpses, two Floater Corpses, eight Weapon Fragments, 20 Meld, two Seeker Rex, and a Partridge in a Pear Tree. XCOM Squad deployed to Mexico has successfully stomped the alien abduction in Lyon. Uh, Mexico is deeply grateful for your help and hopes that these rewards will be of use to the XCOM project. Four more engineers, panic has spread across Africa, panic has spread across Asia, and panic in Mexico has decreased by two. Let's take a look at the situation. Room. Okay, so Australia is in danger of leaving, as is a lot of... South America. This is going to make things very difficult. So, here is how we're going to deal with the potential loss of Australia. Launch a satellite. Um, this does unfortunately mean that I'm not able to take over Africa in one shot. So. The good doctors have completed their respective research into the meld substance. We should consider building either a genetics or cybernetics lab facility to take advantage of these new... Hello, Sungif. Commander, our current satellite uplink facilities are at full capacity. We should build additional uplinks as soon as possible to allow for new satellite deployments. Yeah, well, you won't let me build one. <laughs> did I save... I did not. I'm really... Uh, tripping this up. Okay. Let me just take a minute to delete my um, my intermediate saves. So the idea behind this was is that I would sort of save after each mission to um, I would uh, I would save after each mission uh, just so if I made like an irreparable mistake um, it wouldn't be too punishing. Um, but I don't want to have like a a huge sort of list of Oh wow! I really need to. All right, I'll I'll go through this next um, when I'm not on on cast. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, okay, three days for a power generator. We're not gonna have the um, satellite up in time. Oh, actually, um, I'm not crazy about this decision that I'm about to make, but, um, okay, who gives me the most money? Nigeria. Satellite launched. South Africa. So unfortunately, I don't get the all-in bonus this round. Oh. Like they've changed their tactics, but why? Why do this? It's a message to the entire world that nothing can stop them. I'll say I um, <laughs> uh, I was always really horrified by this. I, I just there's something about this uh, cutscene where like the one act of heroism is punished by possibly the most horrible death in the XCOM universe. <laughs> um, so um, yeah. Oh, this is gonna be character building. Okay. No training mission. We are all hands on deck. I am not at all prepared to um, to take on this. God, I don't even know if I want to do a med kit, but... 
This is going to be one of those ones that I do lots of reloads on, I think. Um, all right. Anyways, welcome back, uh, Sungeef. And um, thank you, everybody, for stopping by, as always. I really love this music when you go on the mission. Now, this should be good news. Hopefully, uh, by winning this, I will decrease the panic across South America overall. Um... So I also really like this idea. In the original XCOM uh, UFO defense, the AI would actually uh, adapt. So if you were if you were doing very well, it would sort of step up its aggression uh, and just generally it would um, it would generally <laughs> sorry. Um, it would generally, um, like, it would it would start doing things to make you uncomfortable and just generally, uh, like, try and, and uh, limit your successes. Whereas if you were losing, what they would do is they'd sort of rest on their laurels and maybe do a little more research. So I always thought that was neat. It was sort of a dynamic difficulty. All right, I was hoping to find something I could kill in there, but... Um... Okay, so we've got a civilian up there. Do I have any easy way of getting up there? I don't think so. Um, I feel like I should have somebody around the side here as well. Um, again, I want to pack away as many civilians as I can before I lose too many people. Um, Okay, I think this one is just going to be straight up running, uh, running and saving people. Oh, damn it. That's going to be bad for my assault. Um... Man, that really complicates things, actually. Um, Understood. Moving out. Okay. Hopefully they can rain down some death when they... Uh... Drat. That one was lucky. This time. Uh, XCOM almost certainly does, but I am referring to um, the Julian Gollop game, UFO Defense. Okay, at least they wasted their shot on a civilian. So can I... Um, excellent, I can. So apparently I also get a flanking. So this should be sufficient to take them out. Um, but yeah, uh, so where was I going with this? But yeah, I, I, in terms of um, the new XCOM, I'm I'm really intrigued by this idea, just story-wise, of the aliens sort of, sort of recognizing that the source of their trouble is coming from sort of an organized effort on the part of humanity to to stop its uh, its invasion. Um, so I, I like this idea of them sort of attacking you at your funding. It, there's just something really. I guess conniving is the the term I want to use. Like, there's just something really interesting about the fact that this alien intelligence is able to understand sort of the the dynamics of what's happening in the the situation well enough to uh, to be able to attack uh, XCOM on a funding source. All right. Um, so the question is, do I want to go for? Overwatch seems a little bit weak, so I am I'm gonna advance. These guys are gonna be very tough to deal with. 
Oh my god, there's so much. Um, okay, so those guys are getting a rocket to the face. Okay. One of my problems with overwatching so much on my heavies is that I tend to lose um, I tend to lose a lot of ammo uh, to like shots that I wouldn't normally take on my own. Um, let's lower that. Okay, I really hope I don't kill a civilian doing this. Oh, but I might be able to. <sighs> I hope this hits. Uh, I don't know about the new, um, I don't know about the new, uh, XCOM, um, but I will say, um, XCOM Enemy Unknown, uh, again, the, I'm, I'm referring to the very original, uh, Microprose published game by Julian Gollop, not the one by Firaxis. Um, what would happen is, oh my god! Um... That game, uh, basically, the aliens would sort of adapt their tactics to um, to the situations you presented uh, you presented to them. Okay, uh, I need to sort of work work on my priorities. So um, okay, I'm gonna save first because I don't know if this is going to have the effect I want. But my feeling is I should be able to save this person and then shoot this alien. Oh god, I forgot about the Overwatch. <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know, guys. I'm I'm getting an error here. Better better reload. <laughs> yeah, so I don't have any choice. I should be able to move up here though. Okay, so lightning reflexes should keep me... See, the problem is is that I get flanked um, either way when I use my... You know what? I'm still going to go for it. My team is in pretty bad shape um, health-wise, so I kind of need to start taking pieces off the board. Yeah, see, I heard that about XCOM too, but I didn't. I didn't know exactly how. I don't know exactly how that worked. But yeah, so basically the. <sighs> All right. Well, offense is the best form of defense, so. Um... Man, I'm going to be just wide out in the open. Um, is there any cover? 83%? I might as well take it. Wow, oh, that was actually a really good... Um, that was a really good uh, rescue ratio. No, it is definitely not an Iron Man <laughs> playthrough, uh, Mingo. But yeah, so like basically, you'd see just fewer operations happen in XCOM Enemy Unknown. That's that's the the most basic version of what. Um, or sorry, not Enemy uh, UFO Defense. All right. Oh, I really like uh, the idea of revive. So supports are usually the ones that I'm willing to go down different paths with. Uh, okay, two damage with pistols or damn good ground. I do like the idea of damn good ground, so. Panic in Brazil has decreased three. Panic has decreased across South America. Okay, so that that's really good news for me here. Um, so all of a sudden, you know, my, um, my North American um, 
sort of air, uh, basically the, the Western Hemisphere is under less threat. Uh, I do still need to worry about Europe and Asia, but um, I've got a little bit uh, less pressure on me with the um, uh, with the success of the panic mission. Um, well, in XCOM 2, the difficulty setting itself will impose undisclosed modifiers on your target numbers, but beyond that, it will impose varying modifiers depending on how many successes or failures you've had in sequence. Yeah, that's really funny. It's it's almost like that really strikes me as the kind of des design decision that uh, gets made because people are complaining so much about oh, not getting what they sort of... They're not just here for abductions. They have something else in mind. Not getting what they feel entitled to. <laughs> I find that kind of funny, but... Okay, um, let's take a minute here. So satellite uplink is going to cost me 100, so I can afford to build satellites up to... I don't remember how many I get, but let's put three in stock. Oh, I already have one being built, so... Okay, so this won't be ready in time for the council um, update, but... That's an axis lift. You know what, I am going to build the axis lift as well, because that's going to put me closer to the thermal generator, and then I can start having some real fun. So the way that I'm going to think about uh, this for the next little while is Africa is going to be my priority so I can get the continent bonus. That's going to give me scientists and engineers plus one each as well. So that's generally a pretty strong position for me to, uh, to be in. I think probably Europe is going to be my next priority as well. One, because I think it's going to give me some more money. And two, because uh, I believe it will... Um, like I, when I think about, um, a, like I've already got so many engineers that getting that constant trickle of additional scientists, there is sort of an argument for South America because getting those instant aut instant autopsies and interrogations are um, that's a that's a meaningful bonus, um, but maybe not to a point where I want to sacrifice some of these other opportunities. We'll see though. Um, what's the continent bonus for Africa? Uh, you get a, I think it's a thirty percent bonus. Um, let's double check. Satellite uplink facilities at maximum capacity. Additional uplink required. Um, oh, it doesn't say. Okay. Um, yeah, my, my belief is that you need, uh, that you get a 30% funding bonus. So, um... And definitely the strategy that I, I started off with was um, was to try and build as many satellites over Africa early as, as I could. Uh, I also think Africa is not properly... Yeah. Not crazy about the fact that I only have one interceptor in my other theaters, but I do kind of need to keep my costs in in check. I can build an officer training school, or I can build a lab. So I think the idea here is I'm going to build the workshops vertically. I'm going to build my labs. Um, so yeah, this is the question. Do I build my labs vertically like this, or do I build like my officer training and such? The steam really dicked me in terms of its, uh, its location. You know what? I think I can afford it, so I'm going to build another uplink. What's an officer training school going to cost? Needs more power. Okay, so I'm basically going to get the steam in a couple of days. Commander, we're detecting a new... <sighs> 
That was a blunder. I think that means one of my um, one of my satellites is going to get spiked. That was a big screw up. We finally found a workable solution to the heat dissipation issues we struggled with when att uh, attempting to create a more powerful laser weapon for our troops. Although this variant still operates near the limit of what we would ordinarily be considered safe, uh, safe operating temperatures, we believe it is stable enough at this point to begin fabrication and engineering. While developing this heavy laser for our troops, we also blueprinted a variation suitable for mounting to our interceptors. Attaching this weapon to one of the ship's hard points should provide a significant boost in firepower to our pilots when engaging alien craft. This technology has also enabled the fabrication of full-size railguns for use by cybernetically enhanced soldiers. Okay. Oh, sorry, I should have said the heavy. So these super cool laser cannons can take down most alien craft, but they have a limited range, requiring the interceptor to close in on hostile targets. Use the build-by item and engineering to manufacture this item. <sighs> okay, so... 18 days for laser snipers or yeah i'm i'm going to go all in on that why use such advanced technology against innocent civilians okay so i'm going to build one of these four of these and three continents so I've got three satellites on the way. Let's. I still need to build my thermal plant. So that's going to cost two hundred. I need to back off on my my expenditures for the next little while. Commander, we picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. All right, I think I can afford to leave Egypt because I'm going to launch a satellite over there. It does mean that these other areas are going to be affected. Um, London is a very strong argument for it because uh, I get scientists and that's going to cool down Europe. And yeah, sorry, Canada, you don't matter that much. Okay. Do I really just have... Okay, I've got two assaults. Um, I do think I need my, my A-team, though, so... And I don't believe I've got a scatter laser for these guys yet. Nope. Yeah, I think for the very difficult mission, missions, I'm going to be bringing, uh, bringing the A-team. Oh, what am I doing? Scope. I forgot to give, the, give these guys laser pistols, so we'll get that sorted in a second. You know what? I think I did this the wrong way. I said I was going to bring my best. No, that's still my best. <laughs> oh yeah, all my good people are uh, are recovering from the last disaster that I put them through. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, I am an idiot. Um, support. Elizabeth, yes. Everything is the way I want it to be. 
And like an idiot, I built four pistols, completely forgetting that heavies don't use pistols. Okay, now that this Charlie Foxtrot is done, um, let's actually do the mission. Yeah, laser shotgun totally is a thing, uh, Mango Duck. <laughs> See, the thing about Canada is if they leave the council, I already have the continent bonus for North America. The next deployment site is in the UK. We're still picking up transmissions indicating alien movement in one of their major city centers. We should get down there and secure the area ASAP. Don't you self-identify with Klaus, though? Oh, wait, no, sorry, Sungi, uh, uh, Mango Duck uh, has Klaus. to engage okay we will save like the scumbag i am as always just take a quick look around to see sometimes you get a peek as to where the meld is um i don't prioritize meld but unlike so I know there's a way of thinking which says like do not think about meld at all completely ignore it and um you know, and you'll, you know, you'll do better. That might even be true, um, but I really don't, I mean, one, from a streaming point of view, um, but two, just from a gameplay point of view, like, I think it's, you know, I'm willing to, like, save and reload games, but I think the whole idea of, like, oh, I'm just going to sit back and, you know, and, uh, and, um, wait, ah, damn it. I didn't give her a laser. All right, I'm gonna try and work with this, but I, I might actually just reset the mission to... Uh... On the move. Okay, so I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that there's no danger in here and advance everybody to the door. Less obvious about what to do with my sniper, um, because there's not a ton of... Oh, there's the meld container. I mean, I could try and put them on the roof. Um... What the? I'm reloading this. <laughs> That's so dumb. Um, we'll see how this round goes out, but like, there's no way anybody's. That's so frustrating. Um, I think I'm actually just gonna try and. I'm gonna go back to the. I'm gonna go back to the continent screen to. Um, to get my laser back on. That means I'm going to have to miss the... <laughs> oh, what a surprise! Right. I think there's a whole bunch of other like um, construction stuff that I. The new engineers arrived this morning, Commander. Oh right, I gotta wait for. Okay. Um... Commander, we're detecting a new contact, much larger than anything we've previously encountered. I recommend we scramble our best equipped fighters if we're going to engage that ship. We haven't scrambled our fighters to intercept the latest UFO contact. Let's hope it doesn't do any serious damage. I think I overcommitted in terms of what I was building. Yeah. 
Uh, heavy laser requires a supplementary power supply that makes it somewhat unwieldy in combat, but is capable of dealing high amounts of damage. We already did this one. Uh, I think I said I was going to go for precision lasers just to be bold. <laughs> um, this time I'll make three, although it's not too expensive. One of these. I'm on three continents. Commander, we picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the hollow globe. Okay. Again, sending the A team because that's I think the only thing I can do in a very difficult mission. Uh Deployment site is in the UK. We're still picking up transmissions indicating alien movement in one of their major city centers. Oh, this is a totally different map. <sighs> this one always makes me depressed. <laughs> um, well, I mean, Sungif, it's. It's um, it's a bit of a weird um, sort of rationale that I have for it, but the basic idea is that um, on the like the marginal benefit of a soldier uh, increases over time. So building the so like I'm able to invest in things like you know better satellite coverage, more money. Um, just generally kind of get my act together. Um, oh yeah, I didn't look for the meld. Um, and like, I guess, so like the, the additional benefit of a, of a, another soldier is at the lowest it's going to be in the early stages of the game. Um, now again, like having a lot of people is nice. Um, but also like, you'll notice that I have some fairly high, um, some fairly high casualty rates. So I think that's a meld container. Yeah, that totally is. Um, this is a death trap, by the way. Um, but we'll probably be able to do something with it. Um, okay, now, because I know I can reload, <laughs> I'm gonna do this, but this is really not something you should do. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, now that I know that's there, I did save, right? Yes. Um, I'm rather foolishly going to split my squad, but... And... This actually gives me an opportunity to move uh, my heavy into the building. Um, But yeah, so basically, like, it just comes down, like, there's a ton of things that are, are good to build in XCOM, but um, in terms of just, like, what I can, like, in terms of the individual decision that I make at a moment, um, you know, uh, the, the, the value of the offer tra officer training school is a little bit lower than some of the other things I could build at the moment, so... All right, this is going to be tough just because of so many mutons, but we'll, I want to try and get close. So it means that next round, I'm still going to be able to move up and, and get this. Um, my prospects for doing any meaningful damage are like nil, but <laughs> he says as he gets a shot. Um, 
Now, the best scenario, of course, is if I can somehow magically fire a rocket through through this. I don't think opening the door is going to fix that. Can I close it after I see something horrifying? Yeah. So uh, I'm also going to put this guy in um, a risky position. Now my rationale here is I'm going to take the weaker guy because that's going to give him a um, it's going to give a targeting bonus. That one was lucky this time. I don't think there's a lot I can do run and gun wise, so uh, I leave myself open to a flank if I do this. Can't access there. There's not a lot of good places for my assault to go. I just don't think the... Okay, it's kind of a weak move, but... I'll try and make something happen with the laser... Oh, I don't have any... That sucks. Um, I have a feeling this is going to be a very painful round. Um, <sighs> see, that is such a shame um, that that is a 58 versus... Well... I'm just going to go for the better shot. Alright, so let's see what their reply is. Yeah. <laughs> just catastrophic. That, I mean, this might be a... Um, this might be a meld that I just have to give up. But let's see if we can make things work. Um, now that I have sort of this advanced knowledge. To actually, what would have been better would be for me to move uh, into that building. But uh, Sniper-wise, I'm actually going to try something a little different. Um... Still gonna move my assault up like this. I can't remember. I don't think this triggers uh, mutons. Yeah. Okay. So the idea here is uh, get them. Oh wow! I'm not close enough for the meld. I'm going to try and put myself into some positions where if mutons show up, I'm able to, uh, I'm able to make the most of it. Um, I'm going to move my, so I can overwatch my sniper. Uh, I'm going to try it, but that may not be my best angle. Um, this is a fairly weak move, but I don't want to, uh, I don't want to rush him, so. Okay, so somebody is going to get hurt. <laughs> uh, looks like the uh, support is the only person who can pick this up. Interesting. So that didn't trigger... That didn't trigger them. Um, I'm going to be such a scumbag about this. I'm I'm mildly curious how much I can abuse that. I don't think I'm going to be able to to get up there. I kind of already said I was committing them here. Uh, and I still can't get to that location that I really wanted. So I'll try moving up. Okay, cool. So I don't know if they move this round or what. Got something over here. Negative damage. 
Cool. So obviously there is no conceivable way that I would have been able to do that on like an Iron Man playthrough, but I'll I'll take the advantage. <laughs> okay. So the ideal here is for my um All right. Hopefully this works. Damn it. That is a load of bull. 60%! You're all a bunch of stormtroopers. Um... I should have seen if I could use my rocket. I think the counterattack is going to be devastating. Yikes. Oh. Uh, okay, sorry, I don't know what happened, but... Okay, I got lucky there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a med kit time. Um, I am really annoyed. So I have a feeling that if I uh, left click my mouse button, it's going to fire that rocket. Okay, is there a fancy ass way that I can... I don't know if this is going to work. This is this really is like me completely abandoning any principles. <laughs> um. That's not what the <laughs> that's not what the overhead said. Is there any way I can make that shot? Sabotage! <laughs> yeah. Not not trying that again. It it definitely did say shot blocked. I would just normally expect to see the blast radius to be on the thing that's blocked. <laughs> um so there is an argument for suppression here. Um See, the big problem I run into is that I can try and help um, my heavy. I will take care of it. Yeah. Heading there now. <laughs> Sorry, assault. Fuck you. <laughs> Actually, I think I know what I'm doing with it. This is uh, fairly intuitive. So what I want to do is just put... On my way. Oh, so I can get a shot off. Ooh, that's going to be a challenge. I really didn't want more guys joining the fight. Interesting. Um, so the question is, do I waste another round waiting for the AI to counterattack? Or do I try and position myself to get that other meld canister? Um...
I'm going to try the one aggressive move, and then if not, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do, uh, a heal on my heavy. Okay, so where can I get my heavy to? Um, that really weak cover, um, and he can't fire his rocket. Not that he can fire his rocket here either. Uh, so, if I'm going to move anybody, I should be moving my assault first. That deals with Overwatch. Okay, so they're just standing still. That's interesting. That's a crappy to hit. I'll see if I can make something from it, but the fact that they haven't moved tells me that I, I'm probably going to wind up resetting that. Yeah, it's two guys. So this is the least appealing of my options. Uh, okay, well, seeing as I know that they sort of stay still, I think what I'm going to try and do is is a very reckless move and go after the um, go after the meld. Um, so I really can't afford to go on the roof um, because that will that's just open for the mutons to Positive enemy contacts. ah damn it okay well if that's the case i'm gonna get a free shot with my pistol yeah as you can see i'm abandoning all principle here because this is going to be a bloody difficult um oh hang on i can't Well, <laughs> that's just going to be a big waste of time. Uh, fair enough. Um, Got it. Move it. Enemies in sight. I'm not crazy about this because it means that I'm going to... Uh, it doesn't mean that they're going to get some free shots on my guys. Um, I also want to split them up so that I don't have to deal with, um, I don't have to deal with poison, or like, lots of poison. Um, this is not a great place for cover. Uh, I don't feel good about this, but... I think at this point I'm just going to save everything. <laughs> Assuming she lives. That was a good shot. So it seems that the Overwatch shots are really helping me with these guys. Man, I'm getting very lucky. Okay, well we lost the meld so um, the whole reason for doing this is now gone. Um, but we might actually be able to come out of this ahead. So, I don't think I get a flanking bonus for this, but I'm kind of curious. Nope, and that's an almost non-existent chance to hit, but let's give it a shot. I can always reload if it doesn't turn out. Um, Yeah, Isisen, it's uh this is actually a pretty fun level, but I always struggle with it, so. Um alright, this guy's only got one health left, so I should be. Um
Oh, so he doesn't get to do anything about that thin man, huh? Um... Okay, well, I guess you are running and gunning. This is not a great place to do a run and gun, by the way. Oh, for fuck. I'm just not thinking straight. But we'll see how it turns out. Oh, interesting. So what... See, what that does... Um, that takes my uh, shotgunner out for a round or two. But he's in good cover, so... Pretty sure my rocket rocket magic's not gonna work here. Okay, so I think what I need to do with my um, support, I'm gonna be splitting things up a little bit, but for the greater good. Uh, I probably should have waited for the start of the turn um, to do that, but. So I obviously I need to reload. Uh, now the real question is what do I do with um, Chi Long. Uh, I I'd kind of like him to be behind heavy cover, but obviously I know there's going to be multiple um, multiple hostiles coming in. So if we can if we can force the mutons to make the move on us this way, then we might be in a better position than with them behind that dumpster. Um. Now, for my sniper, it's just generally bad news all around. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move them up one. Um, and we're going to take the opportunity to reload. Now, they might be susceptible to a counterattack from the mutons. Okay, so the nice thing there is, of course, that they took two uh, two moves to get there. This guy is probably going to be able to fire on one of my guys, though. Got lucky. So the news is not altogether good for the guys in the building, but I think we get a flanking bonus here. Like an idiot, I did not save the turn because this is definitely a tough a tough mission. Cool. I need to decide how I'm going to handle the um, the reload situation. Um, this is... Oh, I don't have run and gun. Okay, this is going to be... This is potentially going to leave me open to the... Um, uh, the the flying guy, floating bastard. Um, now, if I use a shotgun, the odds are not great, 41%. If I use my pistol, actually 49 is only marginal, marginally better. Um, let's do our best with the shotgun. Let's see if we can perform surgery. God, my guy's amazing. Um, this is not great for dealing with the floating guy, but... Come on, Zhang, get your promotion. Eh, eight out of ten. Nice. Okay, so I was a little worried that I might, um, I might get uh, flanked, but it looks like he took mo two moves for that. So, 
These are always a little tough to hit when they're in the sky, but... Cool. Oh, and there are still things alive and wanting to kill me. Uh, <laughs> I am glad I'm being a scumbag on this mission. Um, so the nice thing here, of course, is we already lost the meld. I have no idea how you're supposed to get like the meld in like four. When <laughs> All right, maybe it was like five or six, but like, yeah, that is that is a pretty, pretty high bar. Um, so what we're going to do here, there's no, like, there's no reason in the game for me to do anything but take my time. So I'm going to stop being so reckless. Um, I will use a lot of Overwatch and just generally kind of re recombobulate. Ah! The place I wasn't expecting them to be. Fortunately, a grenade should take care of these guys. What was that? <laughs> Do you think it was going to the bathroom? So this is probably grenade territory, but I don't know. Like a scumbag, because I can't remember where. I have a feeling that this guy's going to get flanked if he goes up along the side of the building, but... I also think it would have been sufficient to just drop the grenade on the um, on the truck, but so the rest of the rest of the plan is basically going to be trying to flush that guy out of his um, out of his hiding place. Oh, that is a shame. Apparently, I had a shot on him somewhere. Um, I don't even know if I should. Yeah, uh, what I think I'm going to do with him. Um, Got it I don't think that's really going to do anything, but we'll see if he can make something happen. Smoke on my uh, assault might have been an idea, but... Cool! I'm not sure if it's... Klaus has... Um... No, it's not Klaus, because uh, I, I brought my elite team. Uh, Klaus has yellow hair. Cool. All right, um, as long as you are able to save and reload an arbitrary number of times, that was a very straightforward mission. I don't know, like once I... I noticed like once I just abandoned all principle and, um, and, uh, and started saving, like I didn't really need that much of it. There was sort of a plan and it, um, one damage on critical hits for each enemy the squad can see. Oh god, I learned how good close combat specialist is. This thing just shreds uh, chrysalids. Alright, three sectored corpse, two floater corpse, two thin man corpse, three muton corpse, 19 weapon fragments, and only 10 mel. Okay, so XCOM squad deployed to the United Kingdom has successfully stopped the alien abduction in London. United Kingdom is deeply grateful for your help and hopes that these rewards uh, will be of use to the XCOM project. Uh, only decrease in United Kingdom, so, uh, but it was North, uh, all right, let's just make sure. Oh, that sucks. So I lose South Africa. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure, what I might need to do is um, reload to the selection of that mission, because I didn't think... I didn't think. Oh, very large. Yeah, this is gonna kill my. Uh... Oh, actually, 
this is good news. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the thing that destroys my satellite, but I'm going to be able to launch another one. We're in pursuit. Yeah. We're getting eaten up here. <laughs> Okay, that is not as bad as that seems. Um, Commander, we've just lost one of our satellites. We will now be unable to track any UFO contacts over that particular nation, and they've cut our funding as a result. Okay, so Nigeria is on the verge of losing its satellites, but... <sighs> okay. So obviously I'd kind of like to mine out all my um, all my areas, but uh, I'm short on cash. All right, so I can put up four more. We have a secure transmission coming oh my God. <laughs> Um, bomb disposal. We've uncovered an alien plot uh, to disrupt transportation networks within a major Chinese municipality. If successful, this would be a good lead to major interruptions in the distribution of goods and services to the general pub public. Intel is still coming in. Expect further details once our squad reaches the site. Uh, that is great because I need to... I need to lower panic in Asia. So we might be able... This is a really rocky... Uh, round, but I actually think we're going to be able to get through it without losing um, a council member. I am going to bring Klaus as soon as I can find him. There we go. Uh, okay. I always thought it was a little funny in XCOM how the laser rifle is sort of your first major upgrade, but because only really the support class uses a laser rifle, um, they indirectly become one of the early and most powerful. Um, so, anyways, let's see how this goes. I also remember struggling with bomb missions. So basically, the rest of this is going to be watching me scum save my way through XCOM for the rest of the night. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Strike one. Council intel indicates the aliens are charging a plasma bomb of some kind in your vicinity. Time is running short. We need to locate and disarm that weapon before they're able to finish priming it. Our sensor readings indicate that the device is some sort of priming mechanism. The aliens are transferring power from it directly to the bomb itself. Disabling this power node should give you more time to find and disarm the explosive. Objective updated. I don't even remember what the explosive looks like. It could be that thing? I don't think it is, though. Um... So the thing I don't like about moving up here is that the cover is not great if something's attacking me from up here, but it is a blue. Okay, well, 
that turned out to be not a bad um, call. Uh, do I want to use... Actually, yeah, I can use my run and gun right away. Again, I I do prioritize taking pieces off the board as quickly as I, I can. Um, I don't think there's a lot of opportunities for me to get some shot. Oh, this might be promising. Nope. And my sniper's not going to be able to do anything exciting, so... Um, I kind of like the idea of putting them on high ground, but... I would have thought they'd be able to climb up the train. Um, question is, is there any really good high ground that... oversees important areas? Hmm. This might work, but I want to keep at least one space between them for... Oh, interesting. So I don't think the sniper rifle will let me... Oh, I can. Okay. Well, I'm going to use um, the heavy first anyway because of hollow targeting. And no need to worry about the rest. Um, okay, cool. Um, now, the real question is whether or not I want to overwatch or whether or not... I think I'm going to move up a little bit. The problem is I might trigger some other enemies, but nope, we're okay. So this is going to be hopefully a chance for me to regroup. Um, but I also ideally will get some of these. That's one of the power nodes yeah. we detected. Disabling it will slow the charging process of the alien weapon. It seems you've bought yourself some time, but you still need to hurry. Or, well, you know. Okay. Good work. That'll buy us a little more time, but you still need to find that bomb. So here I'm just going to start with uh Actually, I'm not crazy about this, but this is slightly better cover. Um So assuming there isn't some kind of a counterattack. Um against my better against my better judgment, I am going to save uh Save again. Because um, I want to get a little greedy on these. Rolling. So the question now is, do I want to... That should buy us a few minutes. Um, the question is, do I want to... Overwatch in case something comes up? Or do I want to get into a better position. I think I'm going to overwatch because everybody's a little spread out. Um, I'm rolling. I shouldn't assume that it's coming from in front. I think the next attack is going to come from the left, both because of the distribution of the power nodes and the, um, the fact that that was where the previous guys came from. Still have no idea where the bomb is though, so... Okay, um... Yes, sir. I got a little lucky there. That's affirmative. X -ray spotted. Damn it. That's not a great spot for him to be in. These guys are actually pretty brutal with their attacks. But... Okay, so definitely... Oh, that is not a laser pistol snipe I want you to do. So the question is, do I try and go aggressive and, and get a, a hit on the Thin Man, or do I keep my team together? Um, and in this case, I'm going to try and keep everybody together, with, of course, the exception of the Sniper, who isn't in a great spot to to do sort of the long bombs, but...
Jesus. Okay, so the best scenario The best scenario is if I can get some eyes on the other guy. Um, there's no good cover elsewhere, so I'm going to okay. move her up. There now. Obviously going to take advantage of the hollow targeting on the odd chance that I'm not able to nail this guy. So that's a 68% chance. It's better odds. It might have been better for me to try uh, with the sniper so that my support could heal herself. Um, and I want to get myself some time, so uh, disarm. And I need to be a little more careful here. Uh, I'm going to try moving up like this, but I think I open myself to a counterattack from the other Thin Man. Okay, so I'm pretty sure he is... Um, I'm pretty sure he is... Ah, there's the bomb. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's um, overwatching right now. That is not a great spot for my guy to be. Um, I think, as usual, we're just going to go for the snipe. There's definitely another Thin Man somewhere. Um, see, the problem with this is I don't have anybody really on... Um, on good uh, on a good counter attack um, so the thin men are basically just going to be running around doing whatever they want um, I mean I could run and gun and overwatch but I'm on it, Got something over oh for Christ's sake I don't think this is going to end well <laughs> Might be able to get a two for one deal. Moving at the speed of death. <laughs> this is not the spot I should save, <laughs> but so the idea here is to deactivate the bomb and then um, shotgun blast the guy. If I'm lucky, it'll also kill the light, uh, the Overwatch. Aha! Wait, where's lightning reflexes? He must not have it. Crap. Job's nearly done. Clean up any remaining resistance. Eyes peeled, strike one. Opposition is headed towards you. Repeat, hostiles approaching your position. We have a new objective. Honestly, Overwatch for everyone. <laughs> and if I survive, it will be a miracle. Oh, man! I'm so proud of that sniper. Jeez. 
Jesus Christ. This is going to be character building. What? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, this is quite the pickle. So I feel like I need to take the over or the 65%, 73, 93. Okay. I did save this, right? Yes, I did. Okay, I feel like I need to take the highest probability. Okay, this guy's only got a rocket launcher um, that he can use for this. And I'm gonna guess I can't hit any of the things I want to. Oh, that's an interesting one. Okay. Maybe. Um, it's not a great chance, but... Oh, that's so upsetting. Well, you know what? Let's just overwatch it. And um, we'll see what happens. Klaus, you are a lucky man. I completely forgot that there's a ton of these guys that show up. Klaus, you are no longer a lucky man. <laughs> Yeah, see, this is prime rocket fodder, but there's just too much stuff in the way. Oh, you disappoint me. Oddly enough, they're all getting critically wounded, so there's still a chance of, of pulling this thing out of the dumpster. Um, so that's a hard target. Ooh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're we're done. Okay, well, I mean, that was a flyer. I'm actually really curious to see if there's a way to get out of this uh, with the squad intact, so... Um... Interesting, so if I... Huh. Um, now, I'm mildly curious here, if I move this guy, um, I know there's Overwatch that happens. I'm curious if he survives. Oh, Overwatch doesn't happen. Okay. So my sniper hit the previous time, so there's more guys on the board. Or no, actually, there's the same number of guys because it was still one damage. Interesting. Yeah, they totally changed there. Oh, it's probably because there's the... because of the damage. Ah, uh, but he's dead, so I don't think I'm gonna... I don't think I can live with that.
All right. I'm kind of curious what happens if I do this. Um, slightly better shot than the other. I also can get a flanking bonus on this guy, I realize. Um, I think they're susceptible to being flanked themselves. Oh, that's right. It's the Overwatch that kept me from doing that. I think I did the sniper rifle first. Weapons empty. Can't engage. Dropping smoke is also an option here. Um, so this is reliant on this thing not getting into a position to kill him. Well, you know what? I've got the Overwatch anyway, and I've been re reloading like nuts. So let's uh, let's see what we can get away with. It's possible Klaus dies anyway. At which point, this whole thing is um, is academic. So this is going to be a good rocket territory, assuming that my heavy lives. Cool. X-ray neutralized. Do us proud, soldier. No way. <sighs> okay. is a terrible spot for me to be, but it lets me reload, so. Um. Oh, I hope he doesn't get affected by the smoke. Christ almighty. All right. Protected the wrong guy. How many more turns does... Okay. So that's 35 versus 34. Neither of those are good. And there's not a good way for me to improve that because of the... Aye, aye, Commander. The poison. Exposed as hell here, but honestly, like... Yeah. I am very surprised he's still alive. In case you haven't noticed, I'm willing to uh, reset this. <laughs> what a surprise! Okay, I gotta make up some ground, but I don't want to commit myself too much to moves. Because um, obviously with the loss of the assault, that sort of changes the... changes the game a bit. Okay, so... Oh, that's right. 
you have to do it in a special order because of the seed. I wonder if I can get away without using the headshot here. I cannot. Now here's an interesting idea. What if I just straight up run my assault to safety and set up my um, and then set up my heavy for like a a reply? I'm still gonna get um, poisoned. So I'm kind of curious what happens now when I trigger the the Overwatch. I die. Well, Dinah, like, Dinah, Mike, what I've done is I've... It, this is a fairly tough uh, mission, all all being equal. Um, and, um, I mean, I'm playing on Classic, right? So that's already a, uh, a somewhat challenging um, prospect. Uh, and then, I mean, at this point, I'm just sort of iterating over some different strategies and seeing if I can... See if I can... Like, I'm, I've set myself a set of conditions for this mission, which is like, okay... I've worked myself into a difficult spot. Let's see how I'm able to navigate it. Um, and like at some point, I might just get tired and say, "It's like okay, there's I don't see a solution to this." And at that point, I you know, I give it a rest. Um, but I'm sort of interested in seeing how you know how deep the rabbit hole goes. Okay, so what I really want to do here is get myself into a position where I can launch a launch a uh, a rocket at these guys so what i'm going to do here is i'm actually going to expose myself because i know the overwatch on the thin man should work and again it's possible this guy dies to one of these other two yeah so i pretty much am guaranteed that wolf is going to be is going to be taken down um but as long as i can end this in three turns it works well for me. Okay, cool. So he's going to be able to launch a rocket at these guys. As long as this guy gets taken out. Now he's moving in a different place, so that may not happen. Okay, cool. So we found the solution to the puzzle. As Johnny likes to say, enjoy your breakfast. Well done, strike one. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, to my view, like, there's a bunch of, there's a way to be sort of be a purist about the XCOM thing, like, you know, well, you know, losing is part of the experience. And I agree, like, one of the things that I say for streaming is that I do generally want to have progression. Um, I think it's inherently interesting to see how the game works and how certain strategies tend to work out. And again, I think it's supported by the story in terms of XCOM 2. Um, I try not to do this on every mission, um, but this was one where it was interesting. Is like, is it possible for this thing to work out, you know, in like, is, is this a hopeless situation? And this is the funny thing about it, right, is that as much as one might rage at XCOM, it turns out that there are very few hopeless situations. It's just whether or not you can see the opportunity at the moment. So if you guys get too annoyed by it, I'll, I'll try and keep the scum saving down to a, a minimum. But I thought this was a really interesting little expense. Uh, a, an interesting little um, experiment. So, the close experience outside of having played the mobile sh Shadowrun game is Fire Emblem. I do not understand uh, trying to keep everyone alive no matter what. Oh, you do understand. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, death of the squad is definitely a part of the game. And I've tried to build myself to a point where if I see a viable solution to, um, you know, to the encounter... Um, wait, he did have lightning reflexes. All right. Um, like if I see a viable solution, um, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll accept the loss, but I tend to be a little bit all or nothing on, on some of these things. So I, I usually wind up just straight up getting obliterated. 
I hope you're doing well, Mike, by the way. I'll, I'll give you a quick shout out in a minute. Now, one challenge I might run into is I don't have enough satellites to um, to protect all the countries because I'm only going to be able to launch three. And It'll take 20 days in the council reports in 19. All right, well, let's see where it goes. Oh, wow, this thing's, uh, this is live. Okay. Um, I guess I only have one living support. <laughs> Or uh, one living assault, so I'm gonna try and use this as a training mission. Although I think the stuff that's gonna be in there is gonna be pretty tough. Okay, so also I did get precision lasers. <laughs> And haven't uh, haven't built the upgrade yet. Oh. I really should uh, I really should get on that. Because let's face it, the the weapons are not quite doing the the trick anymore. But we'll see we'll see what we can do uh, with what we've got. So basically, this is going to be like one of those touchdown, doing well, headed to a chiropractor tomorrow, meeting with a lawyer to get everything finalized. Yeah, I'm really sorry about what happened with your uh, with your accident there. I th I'll uh, touch uh, touch base in a minute when I um, I start the mission. So basically, this is going to be like a has sent a number of requests for assistance. So that's our next drop site. Satellite. Reports do. indicate the UFO set down in a sparsely populated area. We need to stay sharp and eliminate the invaders. Satellite data indicates that a UFO touchdown, high probability of enemy operation in progress, meld energy signature readings are positive. Expect to face a full complement of enemy crew. So uh, this is basically like one of those crash missions where uh, only there's more enemies running around. And I suspect I'm going to start running into like mutons and stuff. So... Um... Anyways, guys... Dynamike is a streamer. He streams things. I don't remember what you were streaming last. I know I watched it. Oh, it was the uh, the Evil Within. You are on the DLC, but not not number two, if memory serves. Correct. Uh, I'm gonna do something. Oh, I forgot to save. Um, but yeah, Dynamike is a, is a really nice guy, uh, very supportive of my cast, um, and very supportive of up many people's cast, as a matter of fact. Um, he... DLC of number one, right? Um, so, it's funny, I, I think it's fair to say that Mike is sort of a, a clean caster. It's like, the, it's like, kind of like, um, comedians, how there's, like, clean comics. Uh, and then there's, you know, blue humor, which, let's face it, is probably a little bit closer to my tastes. But, like, but the funny thing is that um, Mike definitely knows how to deliver innuendo as well. Um, so it's really interesting where, you know, the amount of profanity will be to a minimum. Um, but he's also not above making, you know, a, a slightly more um, ribald kind of kind of joke. Um which I, I I just find kind of charming in some ways. 
Um, but I mean, overall, he's very focused on community. Uh, we've had a chance to sort of talk about his cast and what his goals are for streaming. Um, he does put a lot of thought in terms of kind of how he presents himself to his, uh, to his cast, to his community. Um, and he, he's definitely very thoughtful in terms of some of the things that, you know, make his, you know, make his cast work or, or maybe some areas that he could improve on. Um, and it's just one of these cases where it's sort of like, you know, uh, there's lots of people I'd like to see do well on this platform. And in some ways, I think it's easy sometimes um, to not quite appreciate how valuable your cast is to some people. Um, I think Mike is probably in this state where um, I always hate it when people like I know people try and say this uh, as a compliment, but like sometimes people will be like, oh, I can't believe you don't have more followers. It's like. Well, you know, I was really happy about my follow account until you told me that. Um, so, like, I, I don't know, like, I, I couldn't really say that about Dynamite. But I think one of the big things is, is that, especially for a lot of the people that I've met in his channel, yes, um, I know people really do value um, the work that he does. This is such a wimpy way of doing this mission. I'm not going to get any of the meld. Um, but I also don't think I can afford to, so... Um, so I definitely encourage you guys to check out Dynamite. Um, some of the qualities that I can say um, that might lead you to like the cast if you like mine um, is that Dynamite is definitely very focused on his chat. He's very focused on sort of making sure that that experience is, is fun for everyone. The gameplay is sort of the, the furniture for the, you know, for the larger point that he wants to make. Um, I think he he definitely does his Alien object in sight. he definitely does his style of broadcast very well, um, which is like that almost sounds like a almost like a backhanded compliment. It's like you know, Dynamite does Dynamite cast very well, but no, like Dynamite is one of these people who, like, it's very clear there is a personality behind this. I have a feeling this is going to reveal bad guys, so I'm going to save. Yep. I'm also pretty sure I'm not going to be able to go to that other tree stump as well. Yeah, I got really lucky in terms of where... I really like this guy you're shouting out right now. Let me know when you get to your shout out. I want to hear it now. Like the, again, the big thing on Dynamite is um, he, he's put a lot of effort in terms of his community building efforts. Um, I am going to try this just, the thing is I don't think I'm actually going to have that many opportunities to kill things doing that. Okay, and knowing that this is going to trigger the bad guys. Well, you know what? I can move up like this, and then I can run and gun on the next round. <laughs> Hello, Olin. Um, but yeah, Dynamite... Um, oof. See, I can throw a rocket at those guys, and they're going to laugh it off. Holy crap. Welcome to Flavor Country. <laughs> um, and I am nowhere near anywhere I need to be to get an effective rocket shot off. Oh god, this is going to be character building. Um... Yes, I really enjoyed playing Stellaris with Mike. Um, we should we should do it again if uh, you are so inclined, Mr. Mike. Okay, this is kind of a lame ass way of doing this, but I feel like I need to get a little bit of tempo. So um, this is going to destroy their cover. And actually, again, I shouldn't be saving here. I should have been saving before I moved that guy. 
but let's see what we can make work here. So meld should actually be... I shouldn't be trying to so aggressively go for the meld here because I've got two batches of enemies. But what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and destroy their cover so they need to move back. Um, again, the three damage is kind of meaningless, but this gets my guy into a position where I want them to be. And lets me focus on some other priorities. Um, I don't want to cluster my guys up like this, so I'm going to move my... Uh, now, if I move them up, then I'm leaving them open to counterattack from the mutons. So the question is, do I want to... Um, Okay, so where can I move my assault? So pretty much anything they do there is open to counterattack. A moldy lunchbox, thank you very much for the follow. Okay, I think I'm going to try and focus on taking on the... Um, the Thin Men where I can. Problem is the Mutons are just going to devastate me. Jesus. Yeah, so this guy is just going to be dominated by everything that looks at him. Doesn't really matter. All right, so let's see what horrible things happen to me in the next uh, the next round. I am genuinely surprised they're not dead. All right, well, the world can keep spinning. <laughs> I'll see if I can solve this, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure this is going to be one where I I lose the squad, so <laughs> That is one brave <laughs> thin man. Um so the problem here is I actually need to keep advancing um, to get the meld. Oh, and I got rid of my flanking bonus. All right, well, let's see how this goes. Rambler, thank you very much for that host. I am getting my ass kicked in XCOM, so I don't know how entertaining this is going to be for your people, but welcome, and thank you very much for stopping by. Rambler is a very good friend of the cast. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure we just get wiped out this round. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll see how far we can get with this. <laughs> Answer, not very. <laughs> yeah. I should probably reconsider this from the start. Anyways, guys, I kind of, um, I kind of, uh, sort of just stopped <laughs> shouting out Mike. Um, but no, I really do recommend that you check out his cast. Uh, he's somebody who, again, if you really like those sort of community elements of, uh, of what I do, if you like, um, if you want to watch somebody who, let's say, um, is very focused on sort of building 
building a group of people who can sort of appreciate the type of game that he enjoys, um, I, I strongly recommend him. And another important trait is he um, he's willing to try new things. So uh, he was sort of willing to sight unseen try Stellaris with me. And uh, it led to a really, to me at least, it, it was a fun cast. I really enjoyed sort of sharing that game with somebody who I have a, I have a respect for as a caster and somebody who I, you know, I would like to, um, you know, encourage to try. Yeah, it was a little, a little greedy of me, but we'll see if we can make this work. Um, yeah, just overall, I I really enjoy the time that I spend in in Dynamite's cast, and I think he is uh, he's definitely very good at uh, at making people feel welcome. And so, if you guys, um, you know, again, especially if you guys happen to like the paradox stuff that I play, and you'd like to see. You know, you'd like to encourage somebody to, to sort of step out of their comfort zone and try more of this stuff. I mean, it, it, definitely check out Mike because I think he and, you know, maybe don't let him know. It's like I only came here for your paradox stuff because like obviously he has um, he has veto rights on whatever he um, whatever he casts. Um, but if you want to watch somebody in those early stages of a paradox game, I mean, he's going to be a great opportunity to uh it's going to it's going to be a great opportunity to see somebody kind of have those fun moments when they first encounter one of these uh, complicated and interesting games. So Okay, so I got to be careful about Oh, he already is flanking me, so. And somehow I am rolling all the right numbers. Now I'm going to die. Man. I don't know what entity I should be praising, but that's that could have gone a lot worse. Uh, so much so that I'm going to save over. <laughs> okay. So the problem here is I potentially trigger the mutons. That's one of the reasons I saved, but... The problem is this guy's such a threat that I'm actually willing to potentially pull some other... Uh, some other enemies to deal with it. So, Heavy Laser's gonna give me a bonus to aim. Uh, so I want to be a little more thoughtful in terms of how I handle that. And of course, the important thing to remember is that I have the delightful run and gun. Um, actually, because I've saved, I'm going to recklessly throw my guy into harm's way. Got it. Yeah, I like a hundred percent chance to hit. So heavy laser, even though it's a 48% chance to hit, this is going to give a bonus to... Okay, well... <laughs> The hollow targeting is a nice, um, a nice overall bonus. So um, now the really interesting thing here is I know the mutons are sitting on the right hand side, so it's great if my character can. Um, the best place for my sniper is actually where my heavy is right now, but for second best, I'll set up here. And the bad hombres are here. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything interesting with a rocket launcher here, but we'll see. Oh, I probably spoke too soon. Uh, I don't get the quite the range that I wanted. It'd be great if I could do those three guys, but let's see what happens when I try this. I mean, the other strategy I could employ would be to uh, rush into the rush into the craft and take advantage of like all the cover and the Overwatch opportunities. But I think in this case here, um, it's better to just deal with the clusters as they emerge. So there should be the two frontline guys that I'm able to uh, force force into cover. Okay. 
And then we'll sort of see what we can do as a... Um... All right, so their cover is still intact, which annoys me a little bit. Actually, hang on. Um, I just want to make sure that there isn't a way that I can change the level. Cover my flank. Yeah, so that's going to blow up their cover. So this is what I wanted to do. Hoorah. Of course, it's also not on the alien ship, so that's going to give me some advantages in terms of, like, just getting loot. Um, so I'm going to leave my... Alright, there's a nice high ground advantage here, but for some reason this doesn't seem to count as cover even though this does. Um... Oh, god damn it. Alright. That's a brutal chance to hit. Work though. Um, okay, so trying to figure out what to do with L shotgun bro is a bit of a uh, challenge. So in this case, I think we're just gonna try and surround. So ideally, this is gonna force them to move uh, and just generally like take less desirable positions. One of the biggest things that I found when dealing with the mutons is that, like, you don't want to be reckless, um, but there is there is an advantage to, um, like, uh, the mutons seem to, um, they seem to be the best example of something where you, like, they'll reward slightly more aggressive play because like if you just stand and do a firefight with them they're going to they're going to wipe you out whereas if you try to um okay i'm sorry to do this guys but i'm i'm trying to make some progress tonight um so this one's going to be a little cheesy i'm just going to like run up and shoot him in the face Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, I'm glad I saved that. Um, Roger that. This feels like such a waste, though. Um, him. Understandable, Mike. I hope she is doing well. Okay, so this is not my favorite move in the world, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a surgical grenade to just uh, to wrap that up because the shotgun didn't didn't pay off. So fairly costly in terms of resources, but we got what we needed. So um, now I'm going to lose my damn good grant. Oh, actually, I'll just move up here. Thanks, Dynamite. I, I don't know. I tried to do my I tried to do my best, but um, I've uh, I've just been in a, a weird um, headspace for the last little while, so it's um, um, I sort of feel like I should be reloading more than anything, but um, we'll prepare f to enter the crowd. Actually, you should probably enter through that door. Yeah, shotgunner is definitely gonna. Solid copy. Let's do this. No great places for my support to go, unfortunately. So we're just gonna make him stand out in the middle of the field like an idiot and reload. reload. Okay, so the answer seems to be... Let's take a look. Yeah, I still think we should go from the front and... Um... Okay. 
and kind of take advantage of the um, take advantage of all the corridors. Um, I am probably not going to wind up with the. Uh, God, I think I want to use my pistol this time. Um, I'm probably not going to get the other meld, but again, these are somewhat challenging missions, so even if I collect one, I'm in better shape than I thought I would be. Damn it. <laughs> We'll take a peek. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be able to get it in time, but... Moving out. I also think this sniper is going to be absolutely useless where he is. Heading to that location. Okay, good news there's nothing horrible waiting around the corners for me. Uh, you know what? I haven't, uh, Dynamite. I sort of reserved my um, my loot from having Secret World, the original, um, and I have not put any time. I'm, I'm noticing MMOs are causing me no shortage of grief. <laughs> Um, so I need to, I need to find an effective way to, um, to sort of match my priorities of, I have no idea why I'm keeping the sniper here because they're not going to be able to get any shots in, but okay. So the idea here is I'm going to move them into place. I can use run and gun if need be. Okay, it still won't tell me whether or not it's expiring. <laughs> Fair enough. Moving to designated coordinates. Oh no, it's a legitimate question, Mike. It's something that I would actually, I think I'd quite enjoy playing with you, although I know they've taken a, a slightly different approach for, um, like it's, it's less of an MMO uh, in its current form. Which is not bad, in my opinion. Um, all right, so this is, of course, the cost of me being a baby with my uh, with my sniper. Uh, so this is a fairly decent place to put them in, but um, I'm going to put them close to the uh, I'm going to put them close to the edge because I'm probably going to run them into that room. It's going to take me multiple turns to get the sniper into place. Yeah, I know they're in there. I just want to get my team together. Oh, hey guys! <laughs> to I do not want to go near that thing. <laughs> All right. I am really surprised that doesn't give me a flanking bonus. Um, that is not good. Okay, so if it comes down to it, I'll use run and gun to take this guy out, but... Cool. Obviously, I've broken up my formation a little bit, but we've thinned out the, the alien ranks, so we're okay. Okay, so priority number one, get Mr. Sniper where he needs to be. It may not actually be a great spot for him, just because it may not have full view on sort of the left-hand side of things. Um... I'll get him as close as I can and maybe reload. 
obviously we kind of we need to open and um and kick some ass when we uh Now, one tricky thing, I could heal this person, but I'm actually going to reload instead, because I think, again, next round is just going to be open the door, go in guns blazing, and do as best, uh, as best as we can. It may turn out to be... Oh. We don't get a reaction on that? I mean, the answer seems pretty clear to me. We just... Uh, I think we just sit and wait for things to happen. Number two. See, this is the thing about the meld, right? Is that once you get the two, you, you can afford to do stuff like this. Yeah, that's going to be a baby. Okay. So I want to make sure it's basically two on, two off. Of course. <laughs> it's always the sniper that gets it in the throat. All right. Heading to that location. You leave him alone. Out of the game. Moving out. So, as usual, reload. <laughs> I might as well reload this turn because my uh, Overwatch is going to suck. Copy that. So this is one of the silly things again about the... So imagine, like, so one of the things that I can afford to do here, there's no r major reason for me to actually do things this way. Um, but because there's no... Like, there's nothing to prioritize me getting this done on time. I can actually wait until everybody is, like, reloaded and, and healthy and such. Um, so that was one of the reasons they added meld, was to prevent me from doing, like, the boring stuff that I'm doing right now. Um, but, you know, I can exploit it, right? So I'm, I intend to. Um... We'll see what we can do with this. Okay, actually, I'm mildly curious, so... Enemy troops. Okay, that's not too surprising. So, we should get an aim bonus. What a badass. The operation was a success. All right, so like obviously that was scum savvy as hell, but it's my playthrough. I don't think anybody's watching this for um for expertise. So, oh my goodness, I'm losing a lot of frames. Um and I'm actually at the end of the broadcast as it is. So, I kind of want to see what happens uh with the satellite thing, but so Boomer is definitely doing... Confers bonus health based on which type of armor is equipped. Heavier armor increases the bonus. Um, and we finally got our support. Uh, again, I really like mobility, so I tend to always give um, movement to my um, my guys. Two Flutter Corpses, three Thin Man Corpses, three Muton Corpses, uh, 50 Illyrium, eight, uh, 120 Alien Alloys, 18 Weapon Fragments, 20 Meld, 4 UFO Flight Computers, 2 UFO Power Sources, and 2 Seeker Wrecks. Cool. Oh, 
Okay. Commander, our satellite is prepped and standing by for launch. So deploy it on your orders. Uh, we will start by going to South Africa. Or hang on, which is yeah, South Africa is worth more. Satellite launched. Oh, you know what? I should also in my hangar. When selecting a specific jet within the hangar, you can choose to modify its current weapon loadout. Yeah, it takes one day, so. I am leaving myself open um, to some rather devastating losses uh, by virtue of the fact that I only have one on each continent, but I mean, it's it's what I've got for resources, right? So, oh my god. Uh, all right, according to Dr. Shen's report, the transponder device provided by Zhang is tied to the navigation system of an alien battleship deploying approaching our atmosphere. The doctor believes Deploying a series of modified transponders could provide you with a means of diverting the battleship before it reaches its target. We will transmit the remaining mission parameters to Central. Okay. This is a horrifyingly difficult mission for me. Um, so I'm going to bring the A-team. And I'm going to be trying it multiple times. I almost don't want to bring a sniper, but... Actually, hang on. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to do something real quick. Oh, I have everything. Crap, I thought I was going to be able to build a precision laser. Um, there is no other advantage I can build for my guys right now. We are confident that you will handle this matter with discretion. Okay, well. I'll save at the geoscape here. Um, and we'll, we'll launch the mission. I think I forgot to give him his... Oh, no, he's got a sidearm. Okay. I'll show you the... I'll show you the mission and then um, I'll wrap it up. Uh, a battleship is closing on the city. The squad must place the transponders in time to divert the attack. Aliens will likely deploy scouts to seek out any human resistance. Enemy contact likely. Mission objective. Plant the transponders on the train. Once the transponders are in place, activate the train's drive control system. On outdoor missions, pay attention to surroundings. Flames and debris can help you locate crashed UFOs. Okay. So this is part of the slingshot um, mission uh, DLC. This is a really cool series of missions. So the end, um, the end of this thing is basically you hijacking a. Um, it's basically you hijacking a. Uh, Alien battleship oh. is currently on course for the city, and we don't have much time to respond. Using the device provided by Zhang, Doctor Shen has developed a series of modified transponders that should throw off the aliens' navigational computer. However. The only way for us to get them in position fast enough is by using the commuter rail network running through the city. So yeah, like basically it's, uh, the mission, the thing ends with you hijacking a, um, an alien battleship, which is a, a tough and super rewarding mission. Um, but I found this one absolutely brutal. So I'm going to move the sniper up just to give you an idea. I think she's referring to one of the ones on Twitter, uh, Dynamike. So now that we've got a little bit of um, vision on the, the train here. So basically, 
You have to... So, it, again, in 10 turns, no less, you need to activate one of these. And then probably somewhere around here, there's another transponder. And then, like, I think if I zoom out the map, it'll be a little clearer. So, like, basically, you run down the column of the train. Um, you have to activate three transponders, then get to the controls, and then I believe you have to eliminate the aliens as well. So, and of course, obviously, you're in this, you know, you're in this uh, gauntlet. Um, there's not a lot of cover opportunities, and it's just like mutons and thin men and just miserable. Um, so uh, that's what we all have to look forward to on Wednesday of next week. Um, so anyways, everybody, uh, thank you again for sharing XCOM with me. Uh, I am sorry that Jess was not here to give the proper SO commands for people. It is easy to take somebody like her for granted, uh, and I hope I don't, but, um, please do, uh, keep in mind that there are some wonderful people supporting the cast, uh, who stopped by or hosted. We've got the Rambler 146, we've got Dynamite TV, and we've got the Eyes of Sin, and of course, Jessie Quill herself. I know she is going to be uh, doing some interviews for a sort of a, a gaming convention or like a game developers convention. And I know she'd really appreciate it if you guys uh, stopped by and gave her some support. I don't recall the channel that she's going to be hosting on, um, but I'm sure if you go to her own channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Quill, you'll be able to get the information that you need. As always, let's take a minute and um, host... Uh, host somebody worthy of our attention. I don't know who's online, so... You know what? I do not get a chance to host this wonderful lady very often, and she has got... Um, she's got a game which I played with Jesse Quill uh, on her channel right now. Uh, Tuesday Gray is playing Divinity Original Sin 2. Or, uh, 2. Um, and I would really love it if you guys... Oline, thank you very much. Uh, it was great having you in here. Uh, I would love it if you guys could give a nice, big, loud uh, host for Tuesday Gray. She's a big partnered streamer. She was smaller when I first met her. Um, she is phenomenal. Um, and I would love it if you guys could show her the support. Um, she has hosted me before, uh, especially when she was trying to develop, uh, grow her cast. Uh, it, was, it was a really wonderful opportunity that she gave me. Um, and I do not get a chance to return the uh, the favor very often. So even if you don't normally come with me on on these raids, please for this this one case, Tuesday is wonderful, uh, and it would mean a lot to me if you if you show her the the support that you guys have given me. So, anyways, guys, let's go over to Tuesday's place. Uh, we'll see you all on Monday with more Stellaris. Have a good night. <laughs>